Uh, 4.06. I can't. I, I just looked it you up. Just I, can't, at it. I can't guess. This yeah. is shocking. This yeah. is shocking. 4.06. Is it really? It is I really. finally got one you right. You finally got one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo. I did. For real? For real. 4.06. Dang. You have you've rated it to four both times. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to a Valentine's episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Cupid. Aww. <laughs> and on the controls, as usual, producer Dolan. Hi, Dolan. Happy Valentine's Day. You too. So, so Dolan, we're going to get into... The, Brian uh, was super secretive about this one. I was. But that's okay. Yeah. That's all right. Hey, if you're going to give somebody Valentine's gifts, you don't want to tell them what it's going to be. Oh, all right. So we, we found out that uh, our episode would air very, very close to Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah. Right? So we are just a couple of days away from Valentine's right. Day. Right. And uh, Dolan, we're gonna we're gonna have a, a stout here, and I'm trying so hard to like stouts, and yeah. I think this is the next step mm. for Dolan too. Is right? We gotta. You know, I don't know. I I don't think I've had a stout that I don't like. There you go. Well, Boom. There you go. And and like I said in a previous episode, like I'm just kind of one of those. Why have a porter when you can have it all? You know. Oh. Yeah, I agree. Interesting. So guys, here's the thing. I'm. I don't know. I put way too much thought into most things that I do. Of course you Even do. Even mundane things like picking out a beer. Nope. Uh, and I knew it was Valentine's Day. So I brought you chocolates. And I brought you some flowers. Oh. Some rose or rosé. So that's our bonus beer today. Rosé goze. Yes. Goza style with hibiscus. I, I'm going to love this already. Oh, look. It's kind of like a... Uh, what's it called? Dirty Dancing. It looks like it with a big-ass saxophone. Yeah. All right, so the first one we're trying is from Rogue Ales and Spirits. Yes, this is the double chocolate chocolate stout. They mm. have a normal chocolate stout, and it's good, mm-hmm. but it's no double chocolate. And I, as I brought this in, mm-hmm. um, Seitner saw me. Yeah. He almost accosted me for oh, some of this. So he wanted some. I of might. This. I don't know. He can't have it though. We're still. He's still not drinking. Right. It's no drink. January. Whatever. For him. January. Yeah. So Sucks I'm gonna, to be I'm him. Gonna, I'm gonna tell you right away. Um, the smell of this beer takes me way back. Like my grandpa used to keep Hershey's bars and Crunch bars in the freezer. Yeah. And he would keep so many in there that when you open the freezer, it would smell just like this beer oh and mm, that's oh cool man you it just reminds me of like opening the pack of chocolate like finally getting one of my grandpa's chocolates because he never gave those up <laughs> so then there's I'm, I'm then there was this one time there was this contest and dolan was wanted to get the golden ticket so bad uh. and his grandpa <laughs> got the golden ticket and he jumped out of bed and he danced and then wow. they got to go to i Willy think Wonka. i saw a movie about that one time <laughs> it, was, it, was dolan. it was dolan it wasn't quite that exciting but mm. <laughs> but it was exciting still for me. pretty good yeah yeah I always, I always had a problem with that. So Grandpa was in bed, right? Their family was poor. Yeah. And Grandpa was in bed until yeah. he got the chocolate bar. 20 he, years almost, right? I said. Yeah. Then he could get up and dance and whatever. Get the hell out of bed. But yeah. I mean, that, that factory ran that town. Go I mean, get a damn job. Uh, yeah. I thought he did work there. I don't know. Depends on which version. So you grew, you probably grew up with the Johnny Depp. Oh. We well, didn't I've have seen that. them both. Yeah. We had the Gene one, Wilder. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. See, in the Johnny Depp one, I know for a fact Grandpa worked at the factory. Yeah. Oh. And he got and laid it, off Yeah, because it got shut down. Oh, you oh. know what? No, he worked at the, um, I don't know if he worked at the chocolate factory. He worked at the uh, toothpaste factory. Or was that his dad? Mm. I can't remember. His dad was a dentist. Oh, my gosh. We're way off. Those, oh, man. Those damn do- Oompa Loompas That's took his right. job, right? His dad was a dentist. Yep. You and I didn't touch on in last week's episode where we talked about... Uh, uh, the Philadelphia beer, right? Was uh, maybe was it this? Oh no no no! Oh, it was this one. Oh okay, it was this one. Uh, they've been they've been in trouble with uh, the unions. Oh, Rogue has Rogue has for oh, the cool. union busting and such. Oh nice! I left that part Old out. School. Oh yeah, okay. I guess so. Mm. I don't know. So we'll see what happens. I Let's love get that. Into I it. love that shirt that you're wearing right there. I love Thank it. you. I love it. I'm gonna taste it. The beer, not my shirt. Mm-hmm. 
I tastes can, like chocolate milk. I can see why yep. you like stouts so much. Mm-hmm. I really can. Yeah. I mean, this is an overly chocolate version of a stout, but it's, yeah, mm. it's pretty good. That's chocolatey. Mm-hmm. That is chocolatey. Like see, it. the normal one is, I mean, it's good, but it's not like, you wouldn't call it a chocolate stout. This one, I would say, yeah, this is chocolate. You know what it reminds me of? Just dipping your tongue in a pouch of hot cocoa powder. Mm, yeah, I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Not Doing that a line ever... of hot cocoa powder. Weird. Mm-hmm. Weird. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. But I mean, I guess if it works. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. I used to do that all the time. I, say, I don't know Loved if I've it. ever. But um, I have eaten Nestle Quick with a spoon before when I was a kid. Yeah. So that's, that's probably similar that's to that. What I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, putting the hot cocoa powder or the chocolate milk powder on your ice cream. Oh. Best I've thing. Never, I've never done that either. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. He's full of ideas. I guess so. <laughs> well, you know, it's Valentine's Day, so yeah, you can do any is. of these things. Mm. Uh, Rogue Ales and Spirits, located at 2320 OSU Drive in Newport, Oregon. There you go. Didn't We've never done a Rogue beer before. No. So. Interesting story. Uh, Rogue Ales was founded in Ashland, Oregon by three ex-Nike executives. Oh, that's cool. Didn't know this. Uh, Jack Joyce, Rob Strasser. And Bob Woodall. Now, Bob Woodall's name sounds familiar, and I just read Phil Knight's book. Yeah. So hmm. maybe that's why it sounds familiar. Yeah, maybe. Uh, in 87, 1987, Jack Joyce, Bob Woodall, uh, past University of Oregon fraternity brothers, and their friend Rob Strasser were approached by Jeff Schultz, uh, Woodall's accountant and avid home brewer with an idea to open a brew pub. And they're like, man, eh, we got nothing else to do, and we made all this money from Nike, so... yeah. Why not? We I gotta, guess. We got to invest in something, so we might as well invest in a brew pub. Yeah. Or whatever. Those were just starting back in the... Right. Mid-80s, mid 80s, right? 80s. I mean, this is... Yeah, on the West Coast, that's where it was really starting. So. Early, early days of Sierra Nevada and uh, and, and uh, Anchor Steam, Sam Adams and Anchor Steam. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is early, early days of, of craft. Yep. So, construction began in 88 uh, in Ashland along the Lithia Creek. No idea where that is. A 10 barrel brewing system uh, was set up in the basement with a 60 seat brew pub upstairs. Uh, the first brews were an American Amber Ale, an Oregon Golden Ale, which I did some research trying to figure out what mm-hmm. an American or what an Oregon Golden Ale was. Yeah. There really wasn't any. Probably just like their lager or something like sure. that. Sure. Yeah. And then a Shakespeare Stout. They still make that. They still make the Shakespeare mm-hmm. Stout. Interesting. Uh, the brew pub opened in October of 88 to moderate success, and soon the company started to look to expand. In February of 89, construction began on the Bayfront Brew Pub in Newport, Oregon. In March, John Meyer, not John Mayer. Oh, that'd have been cool. Mm, yeah. A former Hughes Aircraft F-15 designer uh, joined the company. Meyer was previously a brewer at Alaska Brewing Company. Hmm. So it's nice. kind of, uh, yeah, so there's... Kind of hitting the bases of some places we've talked about before. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, the pub, op- that brew pub opened in 89. Rogue now has 11 locations all through Oregon, Washington, and California. I know that they are, at, at least they were for a while, a distillery too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had some of their spirits, and they weren't too bad. They also grow their own hops, barley, rye, pumpkins, honey, hot peppers, and other ingredients in Independence, Oregon. And they've been doing that since 2008. That's probably one of the first pumpkin beers I ever had. Like, that was a big produced one. Was from these guys. Okay. And the bottle is orange. Like, as this, as mm-hmm. that is red, it's as orange as that is as red. And uh, they also have, yeah, some spicy pepper beers. They have... Um, they make a like a they made a mead series for a while that was kind of cool. Interesting. They've been around a long time, so they've done a lot of things, and it's one of the ones that we could always get here. Mm-hmm. It's probably something that's overlooked by people like us now. When we're going to the store, we're not looking for this. I bet you we could go to Hy-Vee or uh, one mm-hmm. of the bottle shops here in town. There's probably six to eight different kinds of rogue beer that yes you never had because you never you just walk right past it. To this point, the only rogue beer I've ever ever had was mm-hmm. Dead Guy. Yep. That was it. And you and you would recognize the dead guy can. It's all black with just like a yeah, skeleton guy on Skeleton mummy looking dude on there. So um they also have honeybees, um, yep. prickless Marion berries. Huh. Don't, don't know what that is. I don't either. Interesting. They make syrups out of Marion berries. Oh. Yeah. It's also the mayor of DC. He liked crack. He sure did. Yes, and he then did. he got reelected. Mm. Cool. Well, for, you know, it's, it's DC. What are you gonna do? Yeah. He uh, likes crack. He likes crack. He did. <laughs> there you go. 
And uh, they grow cucumbers there too, which is interesting. That's, yeah, I don't they, know what that has to do with brewing. I guess you can use them in brewing. Yeah, you know, like cucumber beer. Or? Yeah. Uh, in two thousand, I'm sorry, two thousand eighteen, uh, Brett Joyce stepped down after thirteen years, um, and a person by the name of Dharma Tam succeeded him as mm. president and is president now. Cool. So, yeah. So it's been so long that the dude that started it stepped down. Yeah, that's how long they've been around. Yep. Ones a lot of the ones we've been doing episodes on is like okay they started in 2015. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. One of the one of the OGs. Yeah, in the game. Totally. It's yeah. So this is they have been. I did not know they've been around this long. Like, I had no clue whatsoever. Uh, but you know, a huge respect to them, right? For for well, they've weathered the storms, right? And yep. Their beer is everywhere. I mean, you can pretty much get a dead guy most places. Yeah. That's it's on a, you know if you went to like Alamo Draft House I bet you it's there oh dead yes or uh, some bars that have like I bet maybe Cunningham's down the street would probably have something rogue they've had some rogue beers before yeah. yep they have a fun winter IPA that's called Yellow Snow that's pretty great <laughs> I saw that came in. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they have a, a Christmas beer that has Santa Claus on it I mean they've had all sorts of different ones and uh, usually pretty consistent and not that expensive I think those was like sixteen bucks. But that's not bad for no. a big bomber. That's almost 10%. That's full of chocolate milk. The one I saw this morning that I had to come over and tell you about was called Rhubarb Schmoobarb. Yep. And I've had that one. I'm all about that. That sounds... I would try that. It's good. Heartbeat. It's real good. And they do a cherry limeade Berliner Weiss, too. Which that sounds, one I haven't seen. Oh, my gosh. We have to get that one. Let's try. I would drive somewhere to get that right now. So, I did a lot of research for Valentine's. Because okay. I wanted to... It's a special day, yeah, right? Yeah. So... Maybe you're listening to this over your Valentine's dinner with your sweetie. Uh, maybe you're sitting all alone with your cats. Either I'd be way. so honored either way. Right. Doesn't yeah. matter. Let's listen. Let's get into this. So first thing I wanted to go over is chocolate. Why is it synonymous with Valentine's Day? How did it, how do these two things pair up and link up? I can't wait to hear mm. this. So um, how it works, at least for us uh, in this current time frame, not in, in like the United States, um, they say it kind of started out in the 20s and 30s with movies. Um, they started linking like some of the big actresses, like just the romance movies and stuff with chocolate. So they would be like laying on a bed with satin sheets and they'd be eating chocolates out of a box. Oh. And like it meant like sultry and uh, seduction. And, and it was, Right. It was mm -hmm. like, you know, naughty kind of, you know? Sure. And it's, the chocolate was expensive and it still is to, the, to this day. Hmm. Um, you know, so it wasn't like something you, everybody could have. Yep. Uh, it was like decadent and uh, for rich people almost it was for, for a while mm. uh, until they started changing the way they produce chocolate and distribute it. So gotcha. to where we are at now. Okay. Um, in 1657... So we're talking hundreds of years 1657. ago. 1657. Is the first, they called it a chocolate house, opened in London. And they, they treated it as like medicine. So they said, oh, this will cure this ailment and this thing and that thing. And people would go there and drink basically melted chocolate. And they would just drink it in a cup like it was coffee. And they had these mm. all around. And it was like a meeting place in the city. So oh. you'd go there in the morning and meet your same friends and drink melted chocolate basically it's about the time they had vomitoriums too yeah, right? yeah. Okay, and leeches. So there you go yeah uh in 1770 marie antoinette when she got married to king louis uh mm -hmm. she brought her own chocolatier with her oh so she had her own personal private guy that made her chocolate and i was reading some of the chocolates that he made for her and it was kind of cool it was like something similar to this it had rose petal in it or rose water interesting and they and the chocolates he made were for different reasons so one was for like to help your digestion and one was to help you feel good and make your skin clean. And it had all these different additives like almond milk was one of the ones mm -hmm. that had been using in mm -hmm. 1770s. Thought that was kind of cool. Then it comes to this. You'll know this guy's name, Richard Cadbury, mm -hmm. English guy. Yeah. Well, his family owns a chocolate company. Imagine that. Mm. Cadbury, Cadbury eggs, right? right? So that's Cadbury is in England and Europe, what like Hershey's is to America, right? It's huge, mm -hmm. and it's been around a lot longer. So it's like deeper in the core of the people that are there because it's been so old, so old, long. old, yeah. And I love it. Mm -hmm. You like love that it. stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. So he had made like what they were doing over there, the drinking chocolate. What the, the way they would make it to melt it, what was left over, he was like, well, I don't just want to throw this out. What can I do with it? 
So he started packaging it up and like wrapping them individually. Hmm. And then he, he kind of made himself a designer, product designer, and he designed some boxes and put the candies in the box. Oh, okay. And that's kind of what started it. So we're talking Victorian times. Yeah. And in Victorian England and the United States, um, they really liked greeting cards. That was a big thing. Sending Valentine's cards was huge. Um, they're very handmade and intricate, detailed, sure. full of like lace and roses and cupids and stuff. Yeah. And so he basically takes that idea and puts it on the label or the box top of his candy. So he sticks some cupids and some roses on it and boom, it's Valentine's. Hmm. So that's when it kind of comes out and that's when they start selling. Okay. Hershey's does kind of the same thing over here in 1884. Um, the guy is born, and then in 1894, he's technically a caramel maker. He's not a chocolatier. He makes caramels. Uh, but he okay. starts putting chocolate onto his caramels, and people really like that. And then in 1907, he says, you know what? I got an idea. I'm going to make these things that look like teardrops. And that's the Hershey's Kiss. Aww. So that's in, in, in 1907, and he started putting them in boxes, too, to be sold. And then Russell Stover. You heard of that company? Of course. Yeah. So that's a, a lady who was named Clara Stover, and she lived in Denver. In 1923, she was making these in her kitchen. She made all these chocolates. And she was selling them out of her house and making like a lot of sales, so much that her and her husband moved to Kansas City, and they opened up some factories that are still there, and they are pumping out chocolates all the time. Um, $600 million in annual sales is chocolate, like boxed chocolates okay. that doesn't count candy bars m&ms that sort of stuff this is just like a russell stover's red box of candy hmm. that's how much they sell every year interesting my favorite company. thing about russell stover is the um the leftover boxes that they just kind of put everything in and you get mm -hmm. it's like ten dollars a box but you mm. don't know what you're gonna yeah. get mm. it's like a potpourri grab bag yeah so they were the first ones to kind of make it in a heart-shaped box and then they started selling it to stores. So they weren't selling it to the customer. They were selling it to like grocery store, Walgreens, uh, whatever. Like that mm -hmm. was their market. And now um, they bought their biggest competition, which was named Whitman's. Yep. Which as growing up, that was something I knew about. Whitman's had a box of candy and yes. chocolates. Yeah. Um, they bought them out. And then now their biggest sellers are like Walmart and Target. Like that's how they get their products out. So yep. You can go and get their stuff. I think there's a Russell store store here in Omaha yep, on 72nd 72nd Street. Yeah. Second. Mm -hmm. yep. So like you can get it there, but mostly people are getting them at like drugstore and yep. Target and that sort of thing. Right. Um, and that's kind of how it started. So they just kind of put those two together. Um, the candy guys came up with these kind of cool ideas um, 150 years ago, and it was right around the time of Valentine's Day. Hmm. And Valentine's was basically just a, kind of a holiday for late winter, early spring. Yeah, was just something that they stuck on the calendar and said, "Okay, this is when we're going to celebrate something," and that's how it worked out. Yeah, oh, okay. So that's that's why chocolate is tied to Valentine's Day. Kind of how it started. Okay. Hmm. I, I'm a huge fan of Cadbury. I think Cadbury is probably some of the best chocolate in the oh. world right now. I mean, or has always has been. Uh, my, I go back to and our friend, a uh, friend of the show, Sheila Bissell, who's also a travel yeah. nurse that's been traveling this for a long time has brought me back some of these candy bars. Uh, they're called Picnic Bars. Okay. And they're from Cadbury. And you can buy them here in the States, but you can usually only get them like from Amazon or specialty candy stores. Okay. They're like, they have a, like the puffed rice in them, you yeah. know, like that type of thing. Like a crackle. Like a crackle, yeah. But mm. it's it's more like, it's more shaped like maybe like a payday kind oh, of has, okay. has that kind of shape. Yeah. Um, or a Baby Ruth kind of has a Baby Ruth shape to mm -hmm. it. Uh, when we were in Siberia adopting Maddox, we would go down to the little shop, right? Just obviously no English, very, very, very little English. Right. Um, we would go down to the little grocery store, and the only candy bar in English, it was called a picnic bar. Yeah. The only candy bar in English was that one, and it was made by Cadbury. Oh, nice. So I would get one every day because that was familiar. I was like, oh, okay, I can understand this. And yeah. I see it's chocolate and puffed rice, and it's Cadbury yeah. or whatever. So I would eat one of those, like, like my little snack every day or whatever. Right. Come back here to the States, can't find them. Mm. So, and Sheila found there's a huge candy store near her current contract, current as of, I think right now, I think she's still there in Wisconsin? Minnesota. Minnesota. There oh, we go. Okay. Um, yeah. Huge, huge candy store there. And she brought back a whole bag of them for me. Nice. So, yeah. Took me back. Man, uh, on in high school, our neighbor was British 
and she would go there once, two, three times a year, maybe. And every time she came back, she'd bring back some just solid Cadbury, just milk chocolate bars. Uh-huh. I mean, they were bigger than the Hershey ones. Right. And they were oh. thicker too. Oh my gosh. When she would come back, like me and my brothers, we <laughs> knew we're like, dude, we're going to get some, we're going to get some British chocolate. Yeah. Like this wow. is so awesome. That's like so that. strange, but it is true. Like people get really into that. Yeah. You know, it's like just part of who you are. There's, there was an identity piece for that yeah. too. And I, I remember, so Maddox was only 14 months old, so he wasn't eating chocolate at the time. Yeah. But it was super cool to kind of tell him the story and give him one. Uh-huh. He was just like, eh, it's yeah, whatever. Bar. He didn't care. but Well, he will eventually. Yeah, maybe someday. I think it's, yeah, I think it's really cool. I, li- I like that stuff. I, I think it's interesting how long this stuff's been around. We just yes. take it for granted, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like it had to start someplace, you know? Well, I mean, our... The, the general experience with a regular American with Cadbury is the Cadbury egg, right? I mean, it's yeah. the mm-hmm. Easter Cadbury it's egg. It's like the only thing that really is mm-hmm. that I know of that's always around. That's Pretty Cadbury. much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing about chocolate, I think, is I think like we take it for granted, too. Mm-hmm. Like... Nobody just has one Hershey's Kiss, right? Oh, you have no. like seven or eight, right? But like back in the day when they were making these, like you, you probably had one. It was special, you know. So it's yeah. like, yeah, that's why it's become synonymous with this celebration day mm-hmm. or like Christmas time. You know, like a special event yep. calls for a special thing, which was chocolate. And now we can get it in our coffee and in our cereal and our yeah. donuts and like it's everywhere everywhere but back in the day it was like a real special occasion so mm-hmm. and another chocolate while we're talking about this too it um that i really enjoy is a polish chocolate um mm. it's called kinder joy oh much, yeah, yeah yeah much like cadbury you can see oh. it in walmart they have the kinder joy yeah. um it's like the egg egg, egg. Yeah. Yeah. and it's usually cream filled it's got like a a cream filling and oh my gosh hmm. and you get a little so toy good. yeah you get a little toy and we used to collect those but oh, i mean interesting hmm. yeah. i'm gonna have to try that I yeah yeah um okay so as far as the beer goes i looked at their website and i, I wrote down a couple things i thought was kind of cool and this is going to take us into another direction okay there one the ingredients list was the first thing that was popped up on this thing i don't see if it says it on here real quick i can read no it doesn't say it on here um, they use free range coastal water, <laughs> which I thought was fun. Okay. Wow. Like a free range chicken egg. Sure. Yeah. And the yeast strain that they use in this is called Pac-Man yeast. Oh. So guess where we're going? Pac- Pac-Man. Pac-Man, guys. Yes. Take your girl out or your guy for a date. We've talked about this. Mm. Pizza Hut. Yeah. Oh, you man. can play the Pac-Man game. Maybe. Yes, you could. We still go out for dates to play Pac-Man, the four-player Pac-Man at a beer cade. I'm going to beer cade tonight, so oh, maybe yeah. I'll play it. There you go. It's a lot of fun. Pac-Man, released in 1980. Yep. Originally called Puck-Man. Yeah. P-U-C-K? Yeah, in Japan. It was called Puck-Man because it looked like a hockey puck. Oh. And uh, when it came to the United States, uh, the United States was like... <laughs> We know uh, the type of kids we have in this country. Uh, we cannot call it Puck Man because they will change the name on the machine. They will vandalize it, yep. and it will be bad. So we're going to call it Pac-Man. Mm, okay. And then Japan was like, well, that fits. Okay, we'll call sure. it Pac-Man too. Yep. So that's how they did that. Um, they say, wh- where did it come from? What, where did the design happen? Either it's supposed to have been um, based off of pizza with one slice missing and he's eating. Okay. Or they called it a kuchi symbol, which basically means mouth in Japanese. Oh, hmm. okay. So that I'm, I'm guessing that's probably where it really came from. Okay. Uh, it was created basically to appeal to women because video games at that point were like sports games and war games. Mm. And there wasn't anything that was like not that. Mm-hmm. And also they were like, okay, well, there's a market. Girls have money too. Um, we could get their quarters at the arcade. Yeah. Why the, don't we? Their quarters spend just like male right. quarters. So, so they right, make fine. this game. Okay. Um. As of 2016, they, they estimate $14 billion has been spent on Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> One quarter at a time. One quarter at a time. Uh, it has the highest brand awareness of any video game character of all time. Not surprised. Even more than Mario. Yeah, I was going to say, wow, the Hedgehog. that's crazy yep. over Pac-Man. Mario. That's S- nuts. Link or, or any, yeah, of those. any of those guys. Yeah, yeah, this blows it away. Yep. Everybody knows wow. Pac-Man. Donkey Kong? Even more than that. Wow. Um, I wrote down a few things that I thought were interesting, kind of like trivia facts about it. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. The ghost, you know, the ghost names, Kinky, Inky, Blinky, Pinky, Pinky, 
and, and Clyde. It's something. Is it Clyde? Clyde. Yes. 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 You guys are right. So Blinky's characteristics is he's a shadow. He follows your character. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Pinky he's, is the speedy one. He's fast. Yes. He's coming yeah. after you. That's true. Inky is kind of shy. He's bashful. He doesn't come as, as as aggressive as the other ones. Okay. And Clyde, he's just dumb. He's slow. He's Clyde. Yeah. So that's <laughs> like their personality characteristics as it goes. Sorry if your name is Clyde and you listen to the show. Yeah. So, Sorry, Clyde. <laughs> from Oregon. I don't know. I don't where, even know. Yeah. That's funny. Um, Pinky. That was the one that always got me. Well, Pinky. Because yeah. he's fast. He's yeah. fast. So there are 255 levels to this game. I had no idea. And if you get to 256, there's a bug, and it basically freezes half your screen. Hmm. So that's the end of the game. There was never an end that was made. Hmm. Um, so you can play it, and you can get record. They have, like, Guinness Book records of the score and, like, mm-hmm. how much you score and how fast. Um, the first time anybody got a perfect score, that means they made it all the way through 255 levels. Yep. They ate every c- circle or whatever. They got all the fruit. They didn't get killed one time. Yep. Billy Mitchell, 1999. Okay, took him six hours. Oh my god! Huge controversy here. If you well, want, if yeah. you want a fun story, yeah, look up Billy Mitchell. But Donkey Kong was his. It was Donkey problem. Kong. Yes, but he's the guy that set the record. Yep. As of 2019, seven more people have set this record. They've hmm. done it too. The current record is held by a dude named David Rice. Okay. He scored three million three hundred thirty thousand three hundred sixty, which is a perfect score, as mm-hmm. high as you can get. Three and a half hours it took him. Wow. I've barely gotten through three levels. No. Yeah, I was going to say the furthest I've got is probably level four. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. Did you ever read the book Ready Player One? No. Not watch the movie because the movie is, is an abomination. No, I haven't read it. it the, but I know about it. The book Ready Player One is probably one of the best books I've ever read. I read it in 24 hours. It was so good. Like if you are, if you're our age. Yeah. Our age, like, you know, 40s, mm-hmm. 50s, somewhere in yeah. there. Um, it's all about 80s nostalgia. Nice. Now he gets one of the things he has to do during the thing during the book mm-hmm. is he has to play a perfect game of Pac-Man. Oh geez. And so he does it and the it in the virtual reality game that he's yeah. in, the virtual reality he's in gives him a virtual reality quarter. The quarter is very special at the end of the book oh, okay. that he gets. So he has to play this. He has to play the perfect game of Pac Man. Get the vir- get the quarter. Yeah. He uses the quarter at the end of the game. At, at the end of the book, it's fantastic. Huh. Well, that's actually it did come up in my research a little bit. Some of that, um, because it was like this is explains a little bit. You and I were alive for this. Dolan wasn't, so mm-hmm. he didn't understand how huge it was. It was huge. They made cereal. There was cartoons. Oh, yes. There was movies, like TV movies. Yep. Um, there was a hit song, Dolan. Pac-Man Fever. Pac-Man Fever, hit number wow. nine. And it was by, I wrote their names down. No, I did not, because it sucked. I didn't like the song. It really wasn't that bad. <laughs> it kind of it kind of incorporated the Pac-Man it music. It had the theme song. But here's the song I liked about Pac-Man that was okay. even better. 1982's Weird Al version. Pac-Man. Hmm. I, don't know, I don't know if I've ever heard that. It's pretty great. So oh. that's the one I like. So, Interesting. Uh, I like it better than the other one. Um, in 1982, President Ronald Reagan sent mm-hmm. a letter to Jeffrey Yee congratulating him on his 6 million point score. Wow. Um, now, I don't know how that's possible because they said that the perfect score was 3 million. Yeah. I don't know. Seems fuzzy Was it to a me. different, a different version Scoring of the game? game? I don't know. Uh, yeah. These records, like this Billy dude set or whatever, mm-hmm. and, and this was one of the problems with the Donkey Kong thing. It had to be like original hardware and original mm-hmm. software, and like couldn't have been altered and stuff. Um, and they couldn't prove that he, he did it that way or something. But I don't know. There's eight different records tied to this. Yep, tied to Pac Man. Yep, which I think is r- crazy. If you, again, if you want to find, if you want fun history on on this, go back and watch. There's a documentary, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, about Donkey uh, King Kong. It's called uh, King of Kong. That's what it's called, King of Kong. Mm-hmm. And about how his his there there's a huge feud there yes. in that in that community, right? There's big beef. He's kind of like the father of esports. Kind of. He's like famous for playing video games. Yes, but like thirty years ago, which is weird. Hmm. I remember. Did you ever play Pac Man as a kid? Like in an arcade? Oh anywhere? heck yeah, did yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I don't. When I was a kid, we didn't really have any around that had that. We had Donkey Kong at the local sandwich place by my house. Dolan, did you ever get to play it? 
other than Beer Cade? The local Donkey Kong? Or, or, or the Pac-Man. Local, the actual original Pac-Man. Yeah, original. The actual Pac-Man. So my version of Pac-Man was the... So it, 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 they claimed it was the original Pac-Man, but it was the plug-and-play... Oh yeah, joystick. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. with the with the RCA cables. Mm-hmm. Sure, whatever. So I mean, it, it wasn't exactly the arcade version of it, but yeah. mm-hmm. it was the same game. I mean, it wasn't like it was super detailed or anything. No, it was like no. a maze game, basically. Right. Yeah, it like just two colors, uh, other than the ghost. Yeah, I remember when Super Pac Man came out, and that blew our minds. Super Pac Man, because yeah. you could eat the the special power pellet. That made you like giant. And yeah, you, you got go big anywhere on the screen. Like yeah. that was, and like was Miss Pac Man. Remember that Miss Pac Man? Yeah, that was a big deal. Miss Pac Man. Like there was a whole whole slew of games. Yeah, see, that's what was. I had four games on that plug and play. It was Pac Man, Miss Pac Man, is what sold the joystick, uh-huh. and then it was. I can't remember the name of the game, but you were a mouse and you jumped on the little lines. And the lines would break, and you'd mm. have to get away from uh, the bad guys. I don't know. I don't know. That's you have to collect lawyer. everything, and then, anyways. And then the next one was the uh, the racer, the racing game, where um, you'd have to get to the next checkpoint before the time ran out. Was it pole position? <sighs> can't remember. remember that game. That was I can't great. remember. But you would shift it by yourself, and yeah. Mm. This is super interesting. So I went and looked up the lyrics to Pac Man Fever. Yeah. Because I can, I can hear it in my head. Oh, yeah. It was right? kind of off the, coming off the disco age. Mm-hmm. It was 90 or 81, so it was kind of still prevalent. It was a short song, though. It was. It was not very long. Yeah. Uh, I got a pocket full of quarters, and I'm heading to the arcade. I don't have a lot of money, but I'm bringing everything I made. Yep. I got a callus on my finger, and my shoulder's hurting, too. I'm going to eat them all up just as soon as they turn blue. Yep. Now, he refers to... They refer to uh, Speedy... Speedy's yeah. on my tail, and I know it's either him or me. So I'm like, oh, did we get these wrong? No. Yeah. If you remember from Pac-Man itself, uh-huh. it says character slash nickname. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Shadow was Blinky, Speedy was Pinky, Bashful was Inky, yeah. and Pokey was Clyde. There you go. Poor Clyde. Clyde. Never got a shake. Never got the respect. And remember the Pac-Man cartoon? Mm-hmm. Clyde was like, Woo-hoo. Yep. He was, he was just the, dummy. Yep. Every every villain had one guy in the group that was like that. It was like Nikolai Volkov mm, in the wrestling cartoon. True. He was like that. Yep. Rocksteady and Bebop on the on the turtles. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Yep. True. That's true. So yeah. that's what I have for chocolate. Now we're gonna get into roses. Oh. Mm. Or rose. A, another. This is a bonus beer, kind of, because you knew about Rogue. You didn't know mm-hmm. about this one. I like this a lot. As I've tried to get into stouts more, um, I, I, I would I would order this at the store, like or at the store. Yeah. At the, you know, if I were eating somewhere or whatever, like this is this is something I would definitely. I don't know if it's on tap hardly ever. I'm maybe maybe at like a fancy beer place, um, but otherwise, it's it's at the store every once in a while. My friend John Miller, this is like one of his all time favorite beers. Hmm. So if we, he usually gets one at least once a year. I could see why. I mean, there's some there's good there's good chocolate. There, there's good like bitterness to it I, I, at the end. Yeah, it's just a nice, well rounded f- flavor profile. Before we get into the rosé, let's do the untapped okay. on uh, on Rogue Double Chocolate. I think he's talking to you, Dolan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I, I actually looked up that that plug and play the Pac Man thing uh-huh. while, while oh, yeah. you look up this untapped okay. stuff. Um, I actually had it came with five games. It was Galaga. Mappy is the game I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't remember that with the little mouse. Yep. Um, pole position. So you were right yeah. about that. Yeah. And then Xevious, uh, the mm. the game where you drop the bombs or you shoot the the fighter jets. That's probably one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, I don't yeah. even uh. know it. Yeah, so and then it it didn't have two versions of Pac-Man. It was Miss Pac-Man. Miss Pac-Man. Mm-hmm. And I remember at some point when you get to a level, then you meet Pac-Man. Oh. Like that was the Oh, the cutscenes. Yeah, the cutscenes. <laughs> they meet and it's like dun, 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 yeah, dun, and then dun, they, meet. And they go across. So what was different? She just had a bow on her head? That was it? Uh yeah. It, the maps were different, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all it took in the 80s, man. Exactly little pixel here and there that was a different game that's the thing like so my wife has zero interest in in like 
action figures, comic books, video games, mm-hmm. all the stuff that I love, right? I yeah. mean, she mm-hmm. puts up with my nonsense. Yeah. She loves Miss Pac-Man. Really? We, so when we first got married, uh, we knew a dude here in town sells multicades, like takes old like oh, video yeah. game cabinets and makes multicades out of them. Yeah. And we bought one because it had Miss Pac-Man. That's awesome. And she loves that. Loves it. I want one of those. Mm. I wonder if that goes back to the like marketing towards girls. Girls, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure it has to. Yeah. yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so this is this is awesome. Fifty two thousand check ins for a lot. this beer. Yeah, uh, you have checked it in twice. Oh yeah, your check in notes are funny. Well, okay, what does it say? Uh, November third, two thousand fourteen. You just said yummy. <laughs> yeah, I just put that for the for the last episode. <laughs> uh, you had it at Peterson's Beer of Palooza. Yeah, that's my old house. Uh, and then in May of 2014 at Wine Styles. Where's Wine Styles? Wine Styles is used to be. I don't know if it's still over there or not, but it was on uh, Pacific, like 60th Pacific. Oh, it was like a, it was a wine store that had some craft beer, and they would do beer tasting. Because I went there with my wife. Oh, that day. The one you're talking about, Wine Styles, it was a rogue tasting. Hmm. Uh, your note that day was, is too much chocolate a thing? Yeah. Is Question too much mark. chocolate a thing? Mm-hmm. No, I don't think so. Nope. So 52,000 check-ins, where do you think we're at? Uh, 4.06. I can't. I, I just looked it you up. Just I, looked can't, at it. I can't guess. This yeah. is shocking. This yeah. is shocking. 4.06. Is it really? It is I really. finally got one you right? You finally got one. Oh! <laughs> Woo! I did for real. For real, four point oh six. Dang! You have you've rated it a four both times. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'd actually rate it a little higher than that today. I think I'll go four two five. That chocolate's popping. Go four. I, I like it. Yeah. I, I would. Like I'm going mm. with a four. There you go. I can't believe you finally got one for the first time. That's awesome. I mean, it's pretty kind of hard to do. Yes. Yeah. When you're talking decimal points. Well, you said that, and I'm like. <laughs> oh, I don't even have my phone with me. That's awesome. Finally, um, can you turn that towards me? I'm gonna get a picture. Oh, there of we it. go. There we yeah. go. All right. So as you guys are doing that, I'm gonna start talking about this one. Okay. Um, and I did the brewery research this time because it's a surprise Ooh. for you, right? All right. So, uh, Hoofhearted Brewery is the name. Are you sure it's not who farted? <laughs> who farted? Who farted? Who farted? Guess what? What? It is that. It is who farted. Well, it's who farted, but who farted? Okay. They said, uh, they, I read an interview of the one of the owners, and he was like, uh, like all good things, it came out of a fart joke. <laughs> so, who farted, who farted? Yes. Um, it is in, did I write it down? Here we go. Marengo, Ohio. How's it taste? You took a taste. I love this. Oh, okay, oh my good. goodness, this is good. Um, there slogan is craft beers with all the subtlety of david lee roth and bunless chaps <laughs> which there's a music video a van halen video and you probably know the one i'm talking about but mm-hmm. he's wearing chaps mm-hmm. uh and then their other slogan on their actual website it says more hops than brains okay um here's the owners or the, the guys that founded it trevor williams and jared Bashan. They met or knew each other at Ohio State University. Okay. Trevor Williams came out with a communication degree, and Jared Bashan came out with a welding degree. Oh, wow. And Jared made their, this is cool, pedal-powered grain mill. <laughs> so he has to pedal it like a bike, and that's what grists their grain. Pretty cool. That's fantastic. At the time, when they first opened this, they did not have a tap room. It was just a production brewery. Um, they basically wanted to capture they started drinking beers craft beers in 95 in college and liked it and they started they wanted to make some some flavor combinations that you couldn't get Mm -hmm. and uh the reason they picked this name and stuff was it would kind of let them do whatever they wanted with names of beers oh sure and images and just like flavors and profiles and stuff like that because if if your name of your brewery is a joke like then you kind of get away with whatever you want right absolutely so the guy that does their artwork i guess he's kind of famous um have you ever heard of dirty frank's hot dog palace i've heard of dirty frank yeah Yeah. so Mm, he does the art for that but he does all their art his name is tom lesner so he does all of their cans and you've seen some of their cans we don't norm- we don't get a lot of their distribution here, but we- every once in a while you'll get one. I think you've had one of their beers. It was like called a permanent marker. It was mm-hmm. like a bunch of faces. Yep. Um, their artwork is amazing. They have a Donkey Kong one. 
but it's something. It's called like I can't remember what the name of it is. But I think it's not I've Donkey seen that Kong. Can. No, I've, I've seen that wanted can. that can, and they have amazing shirts on their on their store. Like oh, so the thing that's funny about the Donkey Kong one, Dolan, is he's wearing a barrel. Yeah, but there's a hole at the bottom where his waist <laughs> goes. So yeah, that's how that is. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so they have distribution. Um, there, they now have a tap room, and it's crazy because if you go to like Casual Pint, that's where I picked this up. Yep. A can of this is like eight or nine bucks. Oh, wow. You can, you can go to their tap room and get a 16 ounce pint for six dollars. Oh. So, very much uh, a better price point at the mm-hmm. brewery itself, which is true. Uh, they also had a couple of other different ones that, have, that I know we've gotten in Nebraska, but their names are crazy. Their artwork is amazing. So, I suggest go into their website and look, I'll send it to you guys because I didn't okay. want to send it ahead of time. But there's so many fun ones in there. I was just like, yeah, that's going to be great. There's one that has like cheeseburgers on it. Mm. And there's uh, one that basically, I don't know if it's a caricature of the guy that one of the brewers or something, but he's naked, but you can't see anything. Uh, but he's like streaking. Oh. And that's like an image that they have as one of their things. And yeah, yep. it was, it was, yeah. So they've stayed true to their, their name. Yes. Basically. Yeah. That's Bas- awesome. They said basically that they're eighth graders at heart and, uh, th- that's what their like mentality is. And that's <laughs> what all their beers are supposed to like get you, get you to think about as well. When you, especially when you see their images and slurping your beer <sighs> and slurping. Yeah. Yes. So that ties in well. If okay. there's, if there's really one thing good. that's funny to guys, boys, Boys. I'm going to use yeah. boys in this case. Yeah, boys. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know. Fart jokes. Oh, they're always funny. Fart jokes and dick jokes usually <laughs> go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. Usually. That's true. <sighs> um, Alexa thinks it's funny. There you go. Yeah. Alexa hasn't been listening to me. Notice that you see Alexa. See, she doesn't listen anymore. Huh. Computer. Alexa. She's fed up with see, you guys. See, nothing. She doesn't nothing. listen anymore. Weird. Mm, no. That's good. I finally, tra- I finally tried it. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really good. It, I, you know what? I, I expected a little more saltiness out of it for yeah. Goza, but no, it's not. It's not at all. I think a little bit more salt would make it better, mm. in my opinion. I, yeah, uh, I could go for that. But uh, it's, I get the salt at the beginning, like at the intake. You do. Mm. Mm-hmm. It almost finishes like tomato-y for me. It, oh. Now that you say Maybe it. Maybe that is, yeah. Like a Bloody Mary. A little bit. But it doesn't have any of that in it. Oh, it really does. Like a... Uh, Bloody Mary with, you know, some sort of yeah. lime or lemon or something. I don't know. But, oh, the that's what I'm thinking of. The the pickle in your Bloody Mary. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah. Maybe yeah, you get saltiness out of it. Mm-hmm. So it, they must change the can design every year because I looked this up. Uh-huh. And this part stays the same. But I've never seen this one with a saxophone and the Grim Reaper with a keytar. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which is the reason I bought it, and it said rose on it. And I was like, okay, well, I got it. This sure. just ties in with our chocolate. Uh, so you picked up on it right away. Yes. That's where we're going. Dirty dancing. Dirty dancing. So I looked this up just, just real quick. Dirty yeah. Frank, not not related to the Dirty Frank Pearl Jam song. Oh. Uh, they wrote that song about their tour bus driver mm. oh. during their one of their first tours in 91 with Red Hot Chili Peppers. They thought their tour bus driver was a serial killer. Oh. They called him Dirty <laughs> Frank. Yikes. So Hopefully it's he wasn't. not the... Not the same. Not that guy. I'm, nope. uh, the only Dirty Frank I'm familiar with is Filthy Frank, who is also a an artist. Um, he does the song Slow Dancing in the Dark. Mm. Um, Jojo, Jojo, I, I don't know. He was featured mm. on the... Uh, uh, KC and Jojo? Hot Ooh. Ones. Hot Ones episode. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, yeah, can't remember his name, but Slow Dancing in the Dark is the name. It'll be the first thing that okay. pops up. Shout out to my friend uh, Seth, actual roommate from college. Mm-hmm. Uh, his band name was Filthy Jim. Mm. Mm. Very similar to Dirty Frank. If, yeah, it is. Filthy Frank, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, Filthy Jim. So. We've gone all around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I, I picked this beer, obviously, because of the rosé tie-in, and then Dirty Dancing. I thought, well, that's kind of a romantic movie in parts, of right? Of course it is. Well, not the... Okay, yeah. yeah. I, guess I mean, there's some parts that are great and yeah, some sure. that aren't. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, it, it turns out okay. Uh, so we're going to do a little dirty dancing. You don't put baby in a corner. That's a line. Very true. Famous, famous line. Yes. Uh, Patrick Swayze wanted to cut that line from the movie. He did not want to say that line because it was cheesy as hell. You don't put baby in the corner. He hated it. What? He didn't want to say it. Mm-hmm. And then he saw the movie and he was like, okay, it works. It made sense. So he, it made the film. It made the picture. Yeah. So we've got... Patrick Swayze, ish, right there. Yep. 
And Jennifer Grey ish, right there. Ish. Oh, it's no one puts baby in the corner. Yeah, no one puts baby in there the corner. There we go. There we go. Um They worked together previously in a movie called Red Dawn. I loved Red Dawn. Right? Yep. Well, they loved it too, but not working with each other. They did not like each other. Oh. And in fact, they did not like each other so much that she wasn't even going to try out for this movie. And Patrick Swayze was like, yeah, I know. I get it. Uh, but I think you'd be good at this one. Oh. And please come and try out. And I wonder why they didn't like got each other. It. They just clashed. Oh. Uh, I think it's because he's like a workaholic guy. Mm-hmm. And he's very much... I mean, he was into acting, singing, dancing, um, writing songs. Yep. Like, he just never stopped moving. And that was his... Like what drove him was just creating all the time. He, uh, he sang the song, right? He I had mean, a song on the soundtrack. She's yeah. like the wind. Yeah, reached number three in 1988. There you go. That's for you, Dolan. A little nugget. Mm-hmm. Put it in your head. Okay. Some of that, yeah. Uh, okay, so they worked together before. He convinces her to do it again. Uh, she makes enough money on the movie to change her face. Now she doesn't look the same anymore. Which is super weird, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like not her at all. She's not her at all. Yeah, no, it's so strange. Um, the person that wrote the movie, her name was Eleanor Bergstein. And basically she wrote her life story because her dad was a doctor that worked in the Catskills and they would go to this place in the summertime and she learned how to dance. Oh. So, hey, that's pretty cool. True story. Yeah, kind of. I mean, mm-hmm. some things were embellished, obviously. Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker <laughs> um, <laughs> auditioned for Baby. She auditioned for that part but did oh. not get it. And that was Swayze was like, hey, you got Jennifer Grey. Come Oof, on. That would have been a different movie. This almost went straight to VHS because the Ooh. first time they screened it with an audience, like nobody liked it. Really? And they're wow. like crickets. And they're like, oh, shit. What do we do? Oh, no. Uh, and then they made some tweaks and did some stuff and released it. Uh, the movie cost $5 million to make. Mm-hmm. It ended up making $215 million. Yeah, it's a good so margin. Pretty good, yeah. It's not bad. That's not too shabby for, yeah. You know. The they wanted to make a, not a sequel but a prequel, in the two thousands. That's right. Two thousand four. I recall hearing about this. Yes. Uh, and they offered Swayze six million dollars. Please mm. star in the movie. Sure. And he said no. I don't like sequels or prequels or none of that junk. Mm-hmm. I ain't doing it. No. Nope. He did make a little cameo. Okay. In the movie, but it's called. Uh, Dirty Dancing Havana Nights. Havana Nights. And it's supposed to be before okay. the one that we saw, which was before the 80s. So we saw in the 80s, it was supposed to be in like the late 50s. Sure. And this is like in the 40s. In, in the Cuba, 40s. I, think. I, n- I never saw this. No, I never I don't think it. you need to. Uh, this was great. I like this part because I'm a Conan fan, and mm-hmm. you probably are too. Uh, in 1997, he started this bit on his show. O'Brien, uh, not yeah, Conan. Destroyer. Yeah, not Conan. But Conan, okay. uh, he started this bit on a show about how much he loved the movie. Okay. And he urged his audience to send in letters and stuff so that they would re-release the movie because he wanted to watch it in the movie theater again. Oh. And guess what? It worked. It worked. And they put the movie out again in 97, and he didn't go. Because he's like, I don't actually really like that movie. I just <laughs> want to see if we can do it. <laughs> so he got a re-release, and then he didn't go check it out. Andy Richter put him up to it. Might have been back in the day. Uh, in the lake scene, there's a famous lake scene. Don't, don't one of you seen this movie? I don't even know. Mm. Okay. I feel like I have because I, I recognize some of the things. Well, but... tonight, Valentine's Night. Valentine's Night. Mm-hmm. Watch this movie with your wife. Go get yourself a... I, I believe I've got it on VHS. Yeah. Strike that. I believe my wife has it on VHS. Yes. I can loan it to you. Yes. If you Watch want, it. If you want a romantic evening... Like we did wife. in the 80s. Oh, man. Our VHS player we haven't pulled out in a while. Well, it'll <laughs> still work. There you go. Okay, so there's a, a famous lake scene. Yes. Where they're trying this dance move at the end of the movie. They're, they're practice, working on it. They're practicing, right. Well, they shot this in October. Oh, boy. The water was 40 degrees. Yep. And they were in the water for so long that their faces and lips were blue. <laughs> so if you notice in that scene, it's all shot from a long way away. Yes. Because they couldn't get close-ups because they were so cold and their faces were so blue. How is he just not shivering out That's of control? That's kind of, they had to do it like real fast. And they spray painted the leaves green because the green their leaves were all falling off the trees and stuff. So what was left, they painted green Get to make it look like here. it was spring or summertime. Oh man, crazy! The movies, right? Uh, let's see what else was it. Uh, there was one other thing I thought it was kind of cool. Oh, the soundtrack was huge. Mm-hmm. Um, it mixed in like some new songs with some oldies. It had 
people that sang oldies singing new songs. Eric Carmen had a song called Hungry Eyes. Yeah. He was in a band called the Raspberries in the seventies. That was big. Mm. The I think it was a Drifters maybe had a song in there. Mm. Um that wasn't on this original soundtrack, but it was in the movie. And then it finally got put out and they made like a second soundtrack and it got on mm-hmm. that. And then that song charted again, like 35, 40 years later after it initially charted. Wasn't the soundtrack called like more dirty yeah. dancing yep. or something. That's what I yeah. thought. Yep. So that was in there. And then Patrick Swayze's song mm-hmm. got number three, which is actually a decent song. I think she's so, like the wind. Shout out to my wife. This was, uh, I believe this was the last time she ever danced with her dad before her dad died. This was the song and mm. it was at some family member's wedding or whatever. Yeah. Loves this song. Yeah, it's Loves a good it. one. Yep. And, and it's one of the ones that, like he actually wrote it. So yeah, pretty good. And he sings it. Yeah, sings it. And the, I remember the video. Yeah. I close my eyes and see it. Yep. Uh, and then there was the Jennifer Warren's, I don't remember the other guy's name off the top of my head, song that oh. was like, had the time of my life. Yeah. I remember they're all walking out, dancing together at the end of the movie. Yep. Oh, it all to you. That's, that's when you yeah. don't put baby in the corner, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So at that part, Jennifer Grey was so scared to do that move. Oh, the lift. Yeah. That they never practiced it. What? Never, not one time, because she was scared. So they did it on one take. Wow. The first take, and he was strong enough to hold her up there, and they got it perfect, and that was it. So they did it one time, and it worked. Well, I mean, Roadhouse, come on. Dude was strong. Right. And he was a dancer. I mean, he was yeah. strong from that, too, so... Who is the old guy that was on uh, the the dad? Jerry Orbach. Oh God, he Law was, and Order. He was fantastic on Law and Order. Yeah, he was. He Him was. and Mr. Big from Sex and the City. Yep. Uh, together on Law and Order, mm-hmm. fantastic. Very good. Fantastic. I always liked the movie because um, he he came off as a stern dad. Yeah. But then he did go help, and when when help was needed, he was the one that went and did it. He so. was still a doctor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do no harm. Like that was right. his, Yeah. Exactly. So, so there you go. So we got Dirty Dancing. And we got chocolate, and we got Valentine's. Don't if you're looking for some love on Valentine's, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll loan you the VHS copy. Yes, I guarantee Jenny has this. Oh yeah, I know she does. So I mean, if there's yeah, if you went out there and pulled, I bet you ninety five percent of the the women that work here have seen Dirty Dancing. Oh, maybe a hundred percent. I I think if mm. you're not, you're ninety eight percent. Yeah. Um, uh, Marissa, new Marissa, who's like 24 years uh-huh. old, has not seen it. The one that wears Metallica and Guns N' oh, Roses okay. shirts yeah, all yeah, the time, yeah. but then does not know any Metallica. Well, yeah, I don't know, Guns man. That's dirty dancing. We'll go ask her afterwards. Okay, we'll I, ask her. Kresnik, I think, is their last. I think name? that yes. might be. That's an idea for a daily. That have, is a good. Have idea. you seen Dirty Dancing? Oh yeah, for for Valentine's Day. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a really good. Yeah. We pick we pick like two movies and see what what people have seen. Okay. Or, or what is your Valentine's movie? Oh, Valentine's it, movie. There you go. Put it down mm-hmm. below. Yeah. So, you know, where are we at on Untapped with this one? Untapped says six thousand five hundred and sixty one check ins. Hmm. So decent. And not a bad. Not a bad number. I mean, I think they've been making this three years now. You got you to hear their description because this is fantastic. Just when you thought you had done slurped up all the neon, well, you done thought wrong. You done thought wrong. You done thought wrong. Rosé Goza. Rosé Goza, right? Yeah. Okay. They actually put the little... Uh, yeah, they got the little... What is that? Is it an umlaut? Accent. Accent, accent mark. Accent, mark. Accent mark. Yeah. Is hot pink in appearance with a tart berry flavor brewed with Himalayan pink sea salt, coriander, hibiscus, mm. and then soured with lactobacillus and fermented with Saison yeast. Slicker than your rich French uncle sipping pink <laughs> vino on the deck of a yacht off the coast of San Tropez. Anchors down, pinkies up. Yeah. yeah so it, it actually, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I went to the Rose Gardens in Portland, Oregon. Mm-hmm. And they have a rosé or rose drink. I can't remember if it's a juice or a tea. I think it, I think it was a tea, but... It, it tastes exactly like it. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. So 6,561 check-ins. What do you think? Three, I'm scared four. to guess now because I don't, I don't want to be wrong. Uh, I'll say 3.68. 3.80. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you're too far off. I mean, yeah. 3.75 is a pretty solid score on this. I don't I think so. I don't, yeah, I like the flavor. Uh, the salt happens in a different place than a normal goza. I think yeah. is an interesting. As it warmed up, it, it hits me in the middle, which is weird. Yeah, a little bit. It's kind of fun though, chasing it around, um, chasing it with the uh, double chocolate 
it's it's almost like yeah. eating a candy bar and drinking your juice, you know, or your Kool Aid. That's why we got different cups for this one. There you yeah. go. Yep. I'm not making sure I didn't miss anything in my notes, but I think I'm good. I got a question for you before we before yeah. we wrap up on this one. Give me your best Valentine's memory and or gift. Mm. Anything. Well, I just remember in the eighties at school doing Valentine's, you know? Okay. And you had to that was back when you had to bring them for the whole class. Yep. And I think they still do that to this day. They do. But making the Valentine's box and like actually getting some and you get like those heart candies that are chalk that mm-hmm. taste like junk, but mm-hmm. thought they were pretty good back then. And be mine. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, it was the eighties was a little bit, I don't know. It wasn't great for Valentine's. Meh. I think they've picked it up a little bit nowadays, yeah. but that's it. I mean, I don't, that's it. I don't know if I've really had. So I had a, I had a bad Valentine's experience. Bad. I don't want to go into it. Bad. Oh. Ruined it for me. Off the mic, we'll get into it. Okay. Off the mic, we'll, we'll go into right. it. Unimportant now. But my wife has, my Jenny, my wife has, has made it a, a very, we, we f- focus on that mm. now. Like we make that a thing. Like we'd go, we'd get a babysitter and go have dinner or oh, whatever. Okay. Like that's a thing now. Because now I think it's in popular culture, it's like to, to rail against Valentine's Day is what's hot. Yeah. Absolutely. I think my, the one that now that you say that my negative memory mm-hmm. is when I used to work at Valentino's mm. and Valentine's Day sucked because we would mm. make the heart shaped pizzas, the heart shaped pizzas and they were junk and they weren't real pizza. It wasn't like we <laughs> rolled out this dough. We bought them mm-hmm. frozen and shaped and whatever. So they didn't cook the right way. Yep. And everybody wanted one for the gimmick mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and uh, you had to cut it weird and it just was a mess and it was so busy yeah. and I was like 17. I don't want to be there, you know, yeah. like, mm. so we would do that about three or four years. We made those things. Yeah, when I worked at Casey's, we had to build those heart crust by ourselves. We didn't get it frozen yeah. or whatever, but hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't know. I have two, I have a positive. Okay. Favorite Valentine's and a, okay. and a negative. Um, hmm. Let's hear the positive. Yeah. You want to hear the positive? And then end it sure. with the negative. Oh, okay. I like negative. Yeah. All right. Got it. Because it's pop culture now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so the positive is uh, my now wife when it would have been senior year of high school. As opposed to his previous wife before right. senior year of high school. Well, but, but she would have been my girlfriend at the time. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. You. I see yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Um, she got me this giant card. Like it was probably almost as tall as I was. And on the Dang. front of the card, it just said, hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. And then you open the card, and all it said was, nice ass. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's pretty good. I so, like your wife a lot. She's, yeah. Yeah, she's pretty fantastic. <laughs> so, she's um, not wrong. No. It was a uh, whoa. Oh. <laughs> whoa. Valentine's. Hey, Valentine's. Valentine's, Valentine's whatever. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, that was fun. And then we you know, followed it up with a date and stuff like that. But mm. uh, my negative <laughs> one was... Um, <laughs> And this is this is kind of funny, but uh, well, it, it wasn't funny then, but it's funny now because it doesn't really matter. But um, before Sam, I was dating her best friend. You dog, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, I um, forgot that it was Valentine's Day, and I was planning on breaking up with her, but I didn't know. Oh, like it gosh. just didn't. You forgot that it was February fourteenth. Well, like, I just, all of the commercials and, and everything. You planned else. on breaking up. With well, her on I planned Valentine's on Day? breaking up with her, and then eh, I came to school, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, today is Valentine's Day! Like I can't do this." Um, because I planned on breaking up with her, I never got her a gift. Um, so the only thing I had was eight dollars and sixty-seven cents. Oh, <laughs> just give it to her. I just gave it to uh. her. <laughs> 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 what year was this? Here's my money. <laughs> um, I forgot. Four I saw years it. ago. It would have been 2012. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Wow. So, uh, did she yeah. take the money? She took it. Hell yeah. And, mm. and, yeah. um, and I waited another probably about a week. Mm. She yeah. won't catch on. So, even after that, it was, yeah, it still went. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. 
Yeah. So that's terrible. What a terrible story. Terrible, I love it. I terrible love it. story. That's horrible. I, I, uh, I feel bad about that one. You should. Um, yeah. But like I said, it, it wasn't funny then, but it's funny now because it doesn't really matter. Hey, she's $8.67 richer, right? There you go. So I don't even know. <laughs> Um, so you know what, Brian, I think, uh, you really are Cupid because mm. you shot me with the arrow and the first thing I saw was this road rogue double chocolate yeah. style. Mm. Yeah. I think it worked. I think so too. Mm. Yeah. There we go. Mm. I, I, as I've gone down this road yeah. right, with uh, since 70 plus episodes, right? 76 now. Is that right? 76? Uh, yeah. 77? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. My, it's changed so much that I, I would never have ever, ever, have ever have had that before. And mm. it's, it's yeah, good. So that's good. Step out of your comfort zone a little bit maybe tonight and, and, and yeah. try a stout maybe yeah. with your loved one or whoever you're at with. Give it. Your, or by yourself. Give I don't your know. girlfriend's $8. <laughs> and 67 cents. And 67 cents. Yeah, don't forget the change. <laughs> what a weird number. Uh, that's all I had. Wow. Huh. At least you gave it all to her, though. I, I gave her everything, I guess. Is that all the, the change? <laughs> and it wasn't that much. That's what older. he gave in the relationship. <laughs> My goodness. Wow. Now, was Sam aware that, like, how did that all work? I guess I don't even. <sighs> yeah, what's um, the maybe backstory This, this is the whole backstory for another time. Yeah, we yeah, probably should know. be off yeah, mic for yeah, this. Yeah, I'll tell you the story off okay, mic. Okay, there that we go. sounds good. Yeah. After another beer, maybe. Uh-huh. Yeah. All okay. right. Well, speaking of that, we're not going anywhere for a while. Let's definitely have another beer. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.